Drug Dealers Anonymous. It just had a side job while he was the bouncer at Caroline's. Am I gonna go to jail because no, no I'm weed is dry a, weed, on myself. No, here, weed dude. is legal now in okay, New York. But it wasn't back then, right? Can they retroactively <laughs> take me away? Okay, cool. Seven, Seven years. years. Is that the real number? Don't Dude. set him up. He's very important to a lot of people. <laughs> All right, you but may no, or may but not I, have. I, I, it, it, this could be a fictional story because you're an actor. Could be. You I, could deliver a story. I cannot confirm or deny. Right. But that perhaps. <laughs> I used to, yeah, I used to hustle bags um, at the door because, you know, it was a decent decent job. When you but say bags, this is like small bags. Seeds. Dimes. Is there like seeds? Is this like old school weed? It was mad seeds. <laughs> <laughs> Mad seeds. Okay. I'm just trying to understand where but we're it, at. But, you know, it was the best I could get at the time. And you know Let's I mean? hear about I, the things you're not proud of. <laughs> I, I used to sell weed. Can I say that on the show? <laughs> yes, you can. It's legal now, by the way. You could yeah. Thank you. It wasn't take that then. up again. Oh, it wasn't back then. Idris Elba was born and raised in London, England. His father, Winston, is from Sierra Leone. And his mother, Eve, is from Ghana. Idris attended school in Canningtown, where he first became involved in acting before he dropped out. He eventually gained a place in the National Youth Music Theater training program thanks to a grant. He landed a number of British television roles. And worked with his father in a car factory before eventually making his way to America. He settled in Brooklyn, New York, in Jersey City, New Jersey, working a number of odd jobs while trying to find acting roles and was struggling to make ends meet. What were your other odd jobs? And then I came out and basically went straight into work. I got a, a play and the play got me another play and then I was in into work. Moved to America and it just all fell flat on its face very quickly. Before he was a doorman in Ragnarok, Rock, he was a doorman at Caroline's Comedy Club in New York City, and he also DJed, and the stage name was DJ Big Driss. Working as a doorman at the Comedy Club, he would meet comedians like D.L. Hughley, Patrice O'Neill, and Dave Chappelle. Did you know Dave was great then? He was funny. Funny. Yeah, yeah. He was funny. Patrice O'Neill was really funny. Wow. D.L. Hughley was funny. I mean, all of them. They were. I think it was Dave Chappelle who, like, when I used to do the door work I used to when he used to do his show yeah my, you know my, I used to stand upstairs but I'd go downstairs and take the door by the show so I could watch his show and one day I, I stood I came in kind of halfway through his joke and he was like are you good man and everyone looked at me I was like hey Dave and that was part of the routine it was like English doorman you know I mean he could tell you to get out with a smile on his face and blah 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 it was really funny and then he said to me, yo, what, what are we doing with your hair there? What are, <laughs> of course he What did. are those locks, puppy locks, twisty locks? I mean, they, he roasted me for a good five minutes over my hair. At this club, you will also run into Spanish Jose, the same Spanish Jose who introduced the Haven and Jay-Z to the crack game. Then the Haven introduced me to the game, Spanish Jose introduced me to Kane. So you're not gonna tell us about the side hustle at Caroline's? That's not allowed. We're not allowed to talk about that. We can talk about Spanish Jose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. I wasn't gonna put his name in the mix, but it Spanish Jose asked Idris if he smoked or knew anybody who smoked, and he gave him a large amount of weed. And at that moment, Idris had another side hustle. Again, I'm gonna just say Spanish Jose, which could be a code name. Totally a code name. Uh, who was uh, a delivery d dude who used to come in to the uh, deliver packages to Caroline's and one day he said to me, yo, bro, you, you, uh, you, uh, you know people that smoke. Do you smoke? I'm like, uh, yeah, what is this, an interview? What are you, the feds? He's like, no, no, I mean, if you smoke, I got some good weed, you want to take some? Give me a massive bag. I got, oh, bro, this is way too much. He goes, Cut it up, sell it, or, you know, just give it back to me later. You were recruited. 100%. Wow. And I was like, really? And then. Did you have no fear that I could be arrested for this and go to jail and my whole life could be ruined? Mm, you know, I didn't think about it at the time. Um, I, you know, I really did think about the hustle and, like, yo, because first of all, 
every comedian would come in there and be like, yo, dude, you got some weed? And Did I'd be they like, really? Oh, yeah, all the yeah, time. Yeah. So I'd be like, no, I don't, you know, because everyone used to blaze downstairs or whatever. And so I was like, you know what? This might come in handy. He would get a scale and break down the weed and sell bags at the comedy club. Next year, you know, I got the little mini scales. <laughs> yeah. The Cutting man up. just said he's selling weed out of Caroline's as a bouncer. Which He had a steady clientele, and one of his customers was Dave Chappelle. He probably sold Dave a bag, I'd imagine. 100%. But Dave's told that story. Uh, oh, he has. Yeah, okay, okay. So this is yeah. not snitching on anybody. We he are did not this. snitching. Uh, this is a real so story. So he actually but... bought weed from you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at you. So I was hustling in that, that ting ting. You was a you big know. time drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I, I worked hard on these streets. I know people might think, oh, man, he came from nowhere, but I, I you know, I've worked hard. Uh, security, Idris Elba, the famous actor, used to be a security guard. Really? Caroline's. Yeah, yeah. You asked him, he used to buy weed from him. You know, you used to buy weed from Idris Elba? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I should talk about it. But yeah, 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 you yeah. can talk about it. I did. It's yeah, legal did. now in New York. Yeah, yeah. You know. Once acting began to pan out, he gave up dealing, but he was able to draw from his experience while portraying the drug dealer Stringer Bell on HBO show the wire nah man we done worrying about territory man what corner we got what project game ain't about that no more it's about product yeah we got the best goddamn product so we gonna sell no matter where we are right product motherfuckers product he always said selling drugs was something he was not proud of but had to do at the moment to survive i mean i sold weed <laughs> I'm not proud of it, it's just a fact. Uh to anybody thinking about selling drugs to support their dreams, to make it big in Hollywood, you should know that the odds are stacked against you and you should listen to some wise words from Stringer Bell. Well, you shouldn't sell drugs. 